But as deadly as the months of protests have been, CNN has learned it could have been much worse. Documents obtained by the London-based group, the Dossier Centre, and shared with CNN detail a plan very similar to that which is believed to have played out during the 2016 US elections. This time put forward by a shadowy Russian mining company linked to US-sanctioned Putin confidant Evgeny Prigozhny, offering to help crush the protesters, spread misinformation and keep Omar al-Bashir in power. At stake, a Russian naval presence on Sudan's strategic Red Sea coast. CNN's Nema Albia has the exclusive report. He was just 17 years old, in his first year of university. January 8th, government forces in Khartoum open fire on unarmed protesters. A teenager, Mohammed Al Fatih, is among the first to die. His mother tells us he knew there was a chance he'd be killed that day. It was Mohammed's hope that the government would be overthrown. Our hope is that the same way Bashir killed our son, he must be executed, killed. Sunni's president Omar al-Bashir is ousted, but the crowds gather still outside the military headquarters. Today they're chanting, only blood washes blood. They want justice for the dozens of lives lost during the pro-democracy process. But it could have been so much worse. CNN has learned that in January, Russian advisors to the government drew up plans to suppress the process. Government sources in Sudan say they worked from an office in Khartoum, belonging to an obscure Russian mining company called Eminvest. We just asked in those offices and they told us that um, this was another mining company, not M Invest, but this is the exact address that we've been given by numerous sources. And there really isn't any other Russian company matching the description that we were given of M Invest right here. CNN has discovered that M Invest had sophisticated plans to disrupt the process, painting them as a foreign plot, fabricating evidence that protesters were being paid, that they were destroying mosques and schools. The evidence comes from thousands of documents shared with us by the London-based Dossier Centre. They paint a picture of an operation prepared to go to great lengths to keep Omar al-Bashir in power. But why would an obscure mining company care? Because M Invest is part of a business empire of Yevgeny Prigozhin, one of Russia's most prominent oligarchs and a man close to President Vladimir Putin. The documents reviewed by CNN offer no confirmation that official Russian security agencies were involved directly in trying to suppress the process in Sudan. But Sudan was at the heart of a Russian drive to expand its influence in Africa. Russia had bet big on Omar al-Bashir. It wanted logistical help for their navy at Port Sudan. In January, activists circulated images of heavily armed men observing the process. Government and military sources in Sudan say they were private Russian contractors embedded with Sudanese government forces. At the same time, M Invest was working on a plan to discredit the leaders of this process, recommending that looters, so-called looters, should be executed, putting together a social media campaign suggesting that Israel was behind the process and saying that lesbian, gay and bisexual activists were working among the protesters, something that would have been utterly unacceptable in the deeply Islamic and conservative society here in Sudan. Multiple government and military sources in Sudan tell CNN that Russian advisors were placed in government ministries and the National Intelligence Service. According to one senior figure in Bashir's regime, their plans involved what he called minimal but acceptable loss of life. The regime did begin to implement the M Invest plan, smearing students as trying to foment civil war, limiting internet access, and even devising a fake social media campaign to start disputes and disinformation. The same playbook US prosecutors say Russia's internet research agency used to disrupt the 2016 presidential election. 
the agency and M Invest both tied to Yevgeny Prigozhin. He's previously denied any ties to election meddling and calls to his company for this report went unanswered. And when he apparently felt Sudan's government was slow to act, Prigozhin evidently wanted more. In a letter to Bashir in mid-March, he accused the government of inaction and warned that the lack of active steps to overcome the crisis is likely to lead to even more serious consequences. As the process gained strength, Pogoshin wrote again, praising Bashir as a wise and far-sighted leader, but urging immediate reforms. Senior officials in Khartoum tell us that Bashir hesitated. Within a week, he was gone. But M Invest is not. The documents we've reviewed show that it has close ties to Sudan's military, and they're in charge now. The families of the fallen pray that their sacrifices are not in vain. I'm happy that Muhammad's dream of freedom was realized. I'm grateful to God, and I hope. Dear God, forgive me. Kremlin and its oligarchs may have other ideas, but for now, here in Khartoum, the fight for freedom continues. Nermal Bagher, CNN, Khartoum, Sudan. Moscow has consistently played down Russian contractors operating in Sudan, saying this. We are informed that some employees of Russian private security firms who have no relation to the Russian government authorities are indeed working in Sudan, but their functions are limited to personnel training.